Welcome to this video on automated form completion using Adobe Acrobat and embedded data in URLs. Some of the concepts in this video may be foreign to you, but this video will hopefully get you to a place where you can autofill forms in the PDF format with just a few clicks. Time and effort that is saved is efficiency. Improved efficiency is improved care and reduction of cost. What this video is not about, that is demonstrating something that is hard to do. What this video is about, however, is copying some of the ideas and code used to create your own autofill forms. However, if you already have some experience, if you want to learn JavaScript, great. You'll be on the way to even more advanced and efficient auto form filling. However, if you do know JavaScript, you are that much further along. As much as I hate to say it, form completion is a necessary process. And no matter what type of office, there are forms that require filling out. In many cases, these forms require manual completion and take time and effort by someone, if not yourself, your staff. What if? What if there was an efficient way to autocomplete forms if you did that, over time, there would be time and effort saved. The goals of this video are to show you how to use Adobe Acrobat to change form to have prior pre-filled portions of forms. And then the next step would be to demonstrate Adobe JavaScript and embedding data in URLs using the plink function for auto-completion using the features within Practice Partner and Metasoft Clinical and LiTech Medical. There is some assumed knowledge before you really start. You should have knowledge of how to use quick text, letter codes, plink, or link. And if you ever run into troubles, you can always hit F1 in Practice Partner to learn about these. Some of the software that you'll need in the features include Acrobat, that is using PDF or portable document files, learning how to edit them to do pre-filling, and then use the forms and JavaScript functions to actually do autofill. The Acrobat Reader, a separate program you can download for free, and that allows you to activate these features when you're in the knowledge base in other places. Now, of course, Practice Partner, and within Practice Partner, you need to use Quick Text, Letter Codes, the plink or link functions, and if you're just using pre filled forms of the knowledge base. What has been helpful when I've been developing the JavaScript or other things such as the plink is to use Notepad++ and it can be downloaded with the URL noted below. Let's use a demo. In this case it will be the Cologuard form by Exact Sciences Laboratories who actually makes the kit and testing for Cologuard. As you know, this has become a useful tool when people, for various reasons, cannot have a colonoscopy done or refuse to do it. Sometimes they'll actually do this, and it would be nice to have a form to use, wouldn't it? In this section, it has pretty much pre-filled information that doesn't change, such as the healthcare organization, provider name and NPI number, and other demographics. In the bottom part, it's filled with variable information which would change from patient to patient. Form efficiency includes filling out or having pre-filled forms that have information in the fields that never really change. In this form, this includes the provider information, the test information, and a signature with a date. If these are already pre-filled, then that saves somebody time the next time you need this form. You can also change the form as demonstrated where the arrows are located, information attached. And down below, you'll see medical office staff with instructions for them, and then the Cologuard staff with instructions for them. And actually, the fax form and number information has been moved to be more prominent. You can do a lot of stuff with the knowledge base. Using what you know so far, you can create forms that are already filled out with non-changing but vital information, and then link them to the knowledge base. If you don't know how to use the knowledge base, please go to the EMR Village to learn more. Let's go to the knowledge base itself after the links have been created. As you know, from the task menu above, you can actually go down to the knowledge base. And when you click on the knowledge base, you're brought to your knowledge base. 
This is a disabled browser that has information that you've created yourself. On the first page, you'll notice there's a ColaGuard form area. If you click on either one of these, you bring up the pre-filled form. This saves a lot of trouble. And of course, when you click on ColaGuard TB, you get this form filled out. Please note that the dates use a JavaScript function, which we will talk about more later. In these next slides are next steps in learning how to use the rest of the form. You do this in the variable fields of the form using the following techniques. Use of the embedded letter codes that are in the plink URL and thereby using the JavaScript within the Adobe forms to autofill those forms for each different patient. For starters, use of QuickText speeds completion of lots of editing processes in various portions of the record. Use of letter codes pulls information into QuickText. And again, I would refer you to the letter codes section in help if you want to know what all the letter codes that are usable at any point in time with Practice Partner. Then using PLink with embedded letter codes, this allows you to activate JavaScript enabled PDF documents to automatically populate the fields on a form, such as the ColaGuard form. This would seem daunting in creating a PLink, but it really isn't that complicated. Let's go over the various parts of the PLink. Before the colored area is the PLink command and the actual identified plink called ColaGuard TBMD. After the pipe is the actual location of the document, which is in a subdirectory off of pPart. Then you add the different parts of the query, which actually pull information in that patient's chart and place them where those yellow fields are, which include the patient external ID, the first name, last name, date of birth, sex, home phone, cell phone, first address, second address, patient city, state, zip code, and email. Don't forget that the double arrow brackets that are used in Notepad will not copy over into QuickText and you need to create the label, delete the asterisks, and put all the information in between the two double arrow brackets to make this work. So where would you put this quick text? We use naming functions by using a non-numeric character. In this case, the open quote, which is below the tilde in the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard to put forms that have some type of JavaScript function or calculation capability. In this case, we have the overarching quick text to be ColaGuard form. Let me explain that you have to create a second quick text with the plink. This open quote cola guard brings up these two quick texts and you can see how they're differentiated. Both of these are two documents in the same subdirectory off of P part. They would activate the pre-filled information. Clicking on them would bring up the following. There is the actual plink and below it, you'll see an action code, which will tell the staff to fax the form along with the photocopy of the insurance information. This would be important if you use the electronic encounter form. Let's break down the plink a little bit so you can understand it. In the highlighted areas, you'll see all the letter codes filled in. And you'll see everything else as you had seen it before. Now we have to move on to creating the JavaScript in the document. But first, what have we done so far? We've used the PDF to do editing, and now we're going to go on to Forms and then the Document JavaScript. When you're in the Forms function of Acrobat, you will give the different fields various attributes, and one of them is the name of the field. And you may not be able to see it, so let's magnify this a little bit. As you can see, the fields PTID or Patient ID first name or F name, DOB, and P address 1 all go back to this variable part of the form. And as I said before, you have to assign the names. Now, as highlighted, you'll see the actual names that are linked to the various letter codes. 
These are the particular field names for the Adobe form. In order to access the document JavaScripts, you need to click on the JavaScript function in Adobe Acrobat. And it'll bring up these different document actions, JavaScripts, and document JavaScripts along with the debugger, but use the document JavaScripts. One thing about Adobe Acrobat JavaScript, it is slightly different in some actions than the usual JavaScript used in a lot of web pages, but it works similarly and most of the time all the same. Once you click on that, you can give it a name. In this case, we've given it a name, init, for initial. And below, as you'll note, here, the actual JavaScript. Let's expand this a little bit. Remember these associations again? Now, see the JavaScript. You'll see them in there. Let's go over the JavaScript a little more. So these are the different functions in the JavaScript that do different things. The first section actually is JavaScript code, which takes the p-link and slices out the data we need with the correct associations. The second one is the JavaScript code which assigns today's date. If you remember, or you'll note that in the Cologuard form, there are two dates. These are automatically filled out. And the name of that field, surprisingly, is date ord or date ordered. Then in the last section, you'll note the JavaScript code, which then assigns the p-link data, that is the letter code information, into the specific Acrobat fields. Once you've done all this, created the form, pre-filled it out, done the fields and named them, and done the JavaScript, which you can easily copy, by the way, you are ready to go. So let's say you're in an average note, and this patient is in need of a Cologuard test because he's refused his colonoscopy. Then you can just click on the Cologuard link, which then brings up these two, and then once you click on the Cologuard TBMD, you get the P-Link. Clicking on the P-Link activates your Adobe Acrobat Reader, which you've installed, and it'll bring up the following security warning. Now, you should always make sure you can allow scripts to run in your Internet Explorer browser so that this will run. But once you allow it, voila, it's filled out. So essentially, in two clicks, you filled out your form and it's ready to print. As you can see, it populated all the parts of the chart that you needed to have populated. And above is the JavaScript code for the date ordered. This video will always be there for you to actually look at for these details. So in what seems like a lot of steps, you've actually created a very quick way to navigate and get done a form. So these resources are here. We have them on the EMR Village. The website address is there, and you can go to File Sharing. There's the location, and in here you will also see the PowerPoint and also a link to the video, which will be a YouTube video. Additionally, other resources include UGG, Code, boy, do I feel like that sometimes, JavaScript Primer, for the slightly less enthused, which would be me, and also JavaScript, the Visual Quick Start Guide. Both of these are very useful uh, and will help you greatly. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that even more so, you found this to be very useful in your practice to improve the care of your patients and improve the efficiency of your entire practice. Thank you.